put America on the moon have been found. They were spotted yesterday at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Bill Plant looks at how an internet pioneer made it happen. 13,000 feet below the waves, a robotic arm brushes away a half century of silt. It reveals a symbol etched on a strange metal box, a symbol that doesn't belong to NASA. This isn't a random piece of debris from the Apollo 11 mission. This is something else. This object was discovered by an advanced AI drone during a recent dive into the rocket's wreckage field. It was designed to survive the fiery re-entry and the crushing deep. And the audio recording it holds from the lunar surface reveals a terrifying two-minute gap that Mission Control hid from the entire world. Anomaly in the Darkness for over half a century, the final pieces of the colossal Saturn V rocket that propelled humanity to the moon lay scattered and forgotten. They came to rest in total darkness, an incredible 13,000 feet deep in a remote stretch of the Atlantic Ocean. It's funny when you think about it. The machine that reached for the heavens ended up in the deepest, darkest abyss. The pressure down there is absolutely monstrous, over 6,000 pounds per square inch. That's enough force to crumple a school bus into a tin can. For decades, this hostile environment made any serious recovery effort next to impossible. Human-operated submersibles could only spend precious minutes at that depth, their powerful lights barely managing to slice through the inky blackness. But technology, as it always does, eventually catches up with our ambitions. A privately funded group operating under the cryptic name Project Chimera developed a new kind of deep sea explorer. This wasn't a clunky submarine. It was a state-of-the-art autonomous underwater vehicle, an AI drone named Thetis. Thetis was a marvel of engineering about the size of a small car built to do what humans simply couldn't. Its composite hull could withstand pressures that would liquefy standard metals, and its power source allowed it to operate for weeks on end, completely on its own. It was guided by a revolutionary AI that could learn, adapt, and make independent decisions in its crushing alien environment. Its mission on the surface was simple create a complete three-dimensional map of the Apollo 11 debris field. For 12 straight days, Thetis glided silently over the ocean floor, its advanced sonar painting a detailed picture of twisted metal and scorched rocket components. The AI meticulously logged hundreds of fragments from the S-1C stage, the massive first stage of the rocket. It identified pieces of the legendary F-1 engines, the most powerful single-chamber rocket engines ever built. Some of these had been partially recovered years earlier in an expedition funded by Jeff Bezos, but this was the first time the entire wreck site was being systematically documented. Everything was going exactly according to plan. The data was fascinating for historians and engineers, but it was all expected. Then, on day 13, the AI flagged something that made absolutely no sense. About 500 feet away from the main engine wreckage, half buried in the silt, was an object. It was rectangular, about the size of a briefcase, and its material composition was completely wrong. The drone's advanced sensors showed it was constructed from a titanium tungsten alloy coated with a heat-resistant ceramic that was virtually unscorched by the violent atmospheric re-entry. The thing is, materials like that were highly experimental back in 1969. They certainly weren't listed on any of the publicly available schematics for the Apollo program. Even stranger, the object was almost perfectly intact. It showed none of the catastrophic impact damage seen on every other piece of surrounding debris. It hadn't been ripped apart. It looked like it had been designed to survive. The project leaders on the surface ship were completely baffled. The AI, running millions of simulations every second, concluded there was a 0.01% probability that this object was a standard piece of the Saturn V. 
It was an anomaly, an outcast in a graveyard of familiar ghosts. Thetis's primary directive was to map, but it had a crucial secondary protocol, investigate anything that defied known parameters. The drone extended its sophisticated robotic arm, a delicate instrument capable of handling the most sensitive of artifacts. As its claws gently brushed away the deep sea silt, a symbol came into view, etched into the metal. It wasn't the iconic NASA logo, it was a simple stark shape, a triangle with three smaller triangles nested inside. The symbol wasn't in any database, nobody wanted to say it out loud, but at that moment everyone in the control room knew this was no ordinary piece of space junk. This was something else entirely. This was a secret, deliberately hidden and designed to be lost forever in the crushing abyss. The 50-Year-Old Heartbeat Bringing the mysterious object from two and a half miles down to the surface was an operation of insane difficulty. The team couldn't just haul it up. A sudden change in pressure could rupture the container, instantly destroying whatever precious cargo was sealed inside. Thetis had to carefully place the briefcase size box into a special pressurized recovery chamber. This allowed for a slow, meticulously controlled ascent that took over 36 excruciating hours. The whole time, nobody on the surface ship slept. They were glued to the monitors, watching a live feed of a simple metal box that held a 50-year-old mystery. Get this. When they finally secured it in the onboard lab, their first scans revealed something even more shocking. The box was not just a container, it was an unbelievably sophisticated piece of technology. It had its own internal power source, a compact radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which was still bleeding a tiny, almost undetectable amount of energy. In other words, this thing was still active after five decades at the bottom of the ocean. That's a power source that can last for centuries, the same kind of tech used in deep space probes like Voyager. Scans also showed it contained several reels of what looked like magnetic tape, the kind used for data and audio recording in the 1960s. But the reels weren't just sitting there, they were suspended in a thick, non-conductive gel perfectly shielding them from radiation and physical shock. This wasn't just a box, it was a vault, a high-tech time capsule. The real problem was opening it. There were no visible locks, no hinges, no seams, no bolts. It was a smooth, seamless object, a perfect, impenetrable brick. The team spent a week bombarding it with x-rays, ultrasonic waves, and thermal imaging, desperately trying to find a weak point or a hidden mechanism. The fact is, this device was built with one purpose in mind, to keep people out. It was only when a young, brilliant engineer fed the strange triangle symbol into an AI pattern recognition program that they finally got a breakthrough. The AI cross-referenced the symbol with millions of recently declassified government documents. It found a single, heavily redacted mention of something called the Ares Protocol. It was described as a top-secret contingency plan from the Apollo era, but nearly all the details were blacked out with thick, frustrating lines of ink. However, the document did contain one small, overlooked detail, a specific set of ultrasonic frequencies. It was a total long shot, but the team had nothing to lose. They configured their equipment to blast the box with these exact sound waves. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, a barely visible seam appeared along the edge of the box, glowing with a faint blue light. With a soft hiss of decompressing air, it opened. The air that escaped was immediately captured and analyzed. The readings were off the charts. It was lunar atmosphere, a perfect, uncontaminated sample of the vacuum on the moon, captured and held for 50 years. Inside, the magnetic tapes were pristine, looking as if they were made yesterday. What they were about to hear would not just change history, it would shatter it. Heartbeats of Terror The research team handled the tapes like they were sacred relics. 
They carefully loaded them into a restored playback machine, a museum-quality piece of equipment capable of handling the fragile old format. They didn't know what to expect. Maybe it was just redundant flight data or some classified engineering notes. What they got was audio. Crystal clear, unfiltered audio from inside the Eagle Lunar Module and shockingly directly from the astronauts' own headsets. The first hour of the recording was eerily familiar. They heard the famous historic transmissions that have been played in countless documentaries for decades. They heard Mission Control's tense countdowns, the Eagle Has Landed call that brought tears to the eyes of a watching world, and the heart-stopping tension as Neil Armstrong manually guided the lander past a field of dangerous boulders with only seconds of fuel to spare. And then his iconic words, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. It was all there, exactly as NASA had released it to the public. But then the tape kept rolling. The mission clock showed they were about 20 minutes into the moonwalk. This is where the official NASA transcript notes a brief two-minute communications blackout officially blamed on the awkward positioning of an antenna. A simple technical glitch. But on this tape, there was no blackout. The recording was continuous, and in that supposed gap, the entire tone of the mission changed from triumphant exploration to hushed disbelief. Here's where it gets crazy. You hear Armstrong's calm, professional voice cut off mid-sentence. For several seconds, there's only the chilling sound of his own ragged breathing. Then you hear Buzz Aldrin's voice, strained and hushed with a sense of urgency. He says, what is that? Do you see that? Another long, tense silence. Then Armstrong replies, his voice tight with a mixture of awe and maybe fear. It's incredible. Oh my God, unbelievable. What followed was a frantic whispered exchange that was never meant for public ears. They were describing something they were seeing. It's huge, Aldrin says, his voice cracking slightly. It's built. It has angles. It's shining. The team in the control room on the ship listened, absolutely frozen, their blood running cold. But the audio wasn't the only thing on the tape. This advanced recorder had also stored the astronauts' complete biometric data stream. Every single heartbeat, every breath, their skin temperature, even their brainwave patterns. During these missing minutes, their heart rate spiked from a calm 80 beats per minute to over 160. Adrenaline levels in their blood, measured by their suits, surged. Their bio signs were screaming sheer terror and utter disbelief. This wasn't a discovery. This was a confrontation. Then, through the static of the transmission, a new sound emerged. It wasn't human. It wasn't from their equipment. It was a low-frequency, rhythmic hum, almost like a deep vibration that pulsed in a clear, intelligent, and repeating pattern. The ship's AI immediately flagged it as a non-random, complex signal. It was a language, but not of words. It was a language of pure mathematics. The astronauts weren't just looking at something. Something was communicating with them. Confirmation, not exploration. That rhythmic pulsing hum recorded on the tape was the key to everything. The AI on the research vessel quickly determined it wasn't just a sound. It was an incredibly complex data stream encoded in a frequency just below the range of normal human hearing. The AI worked for days to decrypt it, recognizing it not as audio, but as a form of visual data transmission. It was almost like an old dial-up modem from the early days of the internet, but infinitely more advanced. When the AI finally finished translating the signal, it wasn't a picture in the traditional sense. It was a wireframe model, a three-dimensional map rendered from the mathematical data in the signal. And it showed exactly what Armstrong and Aldrin were looking at. On the rim of a crater, just a few miles from the Apollo 11 landing site, stood a structure. 
It was massive, easily the size of a modern skyscraper, and it was unmistakably artificial. The shape was geometric and elegant, a towering spire that seemed to be made of a crystalline material that was softly glowing, reflecting the distant light from Earth. The data was clear. This wasn't a ruin from some ancient, long-gone civilization. The data suggested it was active, emitting low levels of energy in the very hum that the recorder had picked up. This discovery changes everything we thought we knew about the space race. You see, the moon landing wasn't a mission of exploration. It was a mission of confirmation. The implications are absolutely staggering. Suddenly, so many strange things about the Apollo program click into place. Is it possible that our species' greatest achievement was also our most heavily guarded secret? What do you believe? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to explore more truths hidden just beneath the surface, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more.